Hello, this is Domenico again with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at supply and demand and shifts in this case in supply and the impact on price and quantity supplied and demanded. So um, we're going to look at a first scenario, scenario one, I'll call, and we'll be looking at this particular graph. We'll call it graph A. And graph A, we're looking at the market for cars. Cars being consumed and produced. We'll be measuring price on the y-axis and quantity supplied and demanded on the x-axis. We're going to have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1, and now we know, uh, higher level students know that supply and, and standard level, that S1 is equal to our marginal costs of production, or the additional cost of producing an additional unit of a good or service. And we have a downward sloping demand curve, labeled D1. And we know that demand is equal to our marginal benefit, or the additional benefit gained from consuming another unit of a good or service. And according to the law of diminishing marginal utility, it goes down. So we see that the intersection of S1 and D1, where S1 equals D1, an equilibrium price and quantity is established at point A. So let's go ahead and draw that equilibrium price. And we will call that price P1. So where S1 equals D1, an equilibrium price is established at P1. And we have an equilibrium quantity established at Q1. So remember that at Q1, that the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded. Right? We see that the quantity supplied at point A is equal to the quantity demanded at point A. Okay. Now, some things to notice, and we'll talk about this uh, more in a future uh, video, is that the difference between the, uh, the benefit curve, right, the demand curve, and the price being sold is what we call the producer surplus. So the difference between what a person's willing to pay, perhaps they're willing to pay $20,000 for a car, but they're actually going to pay fifteen. dollars that's about $5,000 of savings. Perhaps another person's willing to pay $16,000, but they actually pay $15,000 for a car, so they save $1,000, and that's what we call consumer surplus. This is another way of kind of saying the, the, the level of savings that consumers have when they pay a certain price that's below what they were actually willing to pay. And uh, below, we have the producer surplus. The uh, supply curve are the costs of production. So this is the minimum price that they can accept to cover their costs, to break even. But they're actually charging a higher price. So the difference between the price and the cost is what we call our producer surplus. But we also know that by definition, price minus costs equals Profit. So we can also think of the producer surplus as um, the profit margin of the firm. All right. Let me just continue to, let me just see if I can connect that further so we can see. All right. So there we go. All right. So this is our starting point where S1 equals D1. We have an equilibrium price established at P1, an equilibrium quantity established at Q1, and a Q1 quantity supply is equal to quantity demanded. But we also want to remember that the supply curve is equal to our marginal cost, our demand curve is equal to our marginal benefit. So we can also state that the, the marginal costs of production are equal to the marginal benefit. Thus, this point is allocatively efficient. We are producing the quantity of goods and services that are desired by society, or producing the quantity of cars that are desired by society. So society 
is, um, is content. And consumer and producer surplus, social surplus, the sum of the two, is at maximum. So this is what economists want. They want to maximize the allocative efficiency um, within, within society. But then something happens as a change. So car manufacturers are under a lot of pressure due to the heavy competition within this industry to be as productively efficient as possible, to use any new technologies that can increase output and reduce costs so that they can price their products a little bit lower and grab market share. One of these technologies that have been aggressively used by car manufacturers are industrial robots, um, automation. The ability to invest and employ this technology allows for output to increase and for uh, quantity, uh, yeah, output to increase and for um, uh, the quality of the product to also improve. We don't have the mistakes being made you know, through handcrafted vehicles. So you get improved quality and increased output. So the supply curve shifts out as these firms employ um, this technology. So S1 shifts out. Oop, let me do that again. Mistake. Here we go. S1 shifts out to S2. Again, we're going to remember that S2 is equal to our marginal costs of production. And we're going to hold the price constant in the short run. So price will be held constant in the short run. So we're going from point A to point B, right? And at point B, if firms continue to price at P1, you see, actually, let me just maintain the same color. We see that there's an increase in the quantity supplied at Q2. So at Q2, we're just noticing that the quantity supplied of vehicles is greater than the quantity demanded at that price. So here's price. The quantity demanded at that price is at point A. But at that price with the new technology, the quantity supplied is at point P. So quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. So we end up with excess supply. Too much is being produced. And when there's excess supply, what happens is that there is downward pressure on price. There's too much, so firms will have to lower price because at that price, the quantity demanded is significantly lower than the quantity supplied. Now, we also want to notice that at Q2, here's our cost of production. All right, at Q2, I'm going to highlight that. At Q2, we see that the marginal cost, MC2, is greater then at this point, the marginal benefit. So at Q2, at a price of P1, we see that the marginal costs, MC2, is greater than the marginal benefit of production. And that means that we are over allocating resources to the production of this good or service. This is an over allocation of resources being uh, allocated to the production of cars. We are producing too many cars. Society wants less. We don't need this quantity of cars. So what happens? In a free market economy, firms will begin to have to lower their price. So price is going to begin to fall and as price falls, the quantity demanded starts to increase. So a fall in price leads to a decrease in the quantity supplied along our new S2 curve and an increase in the quantity demanded along our demand curve. And we will then reach equilibrium at point C. All right. So here we're seeing a new price being established at P2, we don't need these notes now. Okay, so price falls 
from P1 to P2 due to the excess supply causing the quantity demanded to increase along the demand curve from point A to point C and the quantity supplied to decrease along the new supply curve from point B to point C, establishing a new equilibrium quantity at Q3. So we're at Q3, and at Q3 we notice where S2 equals demand 1, we have a new price at P2, we have a new quantity at Q3, and at Q3, again, the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded. And we are allocatively efficient again because now MC2 equals MB1. And we've achieved allocative efficiency. Okay. So this is the role of what we call the price mechanism, right? The price mechanism is referring to how a change in price reallocates resources to reach the allocatively efficient um, quantity and price that is desired by society. All right, so let's analyze this as we would in a paper one exam. As can be seen, we have a graph labeled uh, graph A. It's the market for cars. On the x-axis, we're measuring quantity. On the y-axis, we're measuring price. We have an upward sloping supply curve labeled S1, which is equal to our marginal cost of production, MC1. We have a downward sloping demand curve labeled D1, equal to our marginal benefit of production. And where S1 equals D1 at point A, an equilibrium price is established at P1, and an equilibrium quantity is established at Q1. Keep in mind that at Q1, the quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded. And also we'll notice that the marginal cost is equal to the marginal benefit. So this is an allocatively efficient level of output. Resources are being allocatedly, allocatedly, are allocated efficiently uh, to meet the combination of goods and services that are desired by society. Then uh, car manufacturers begin to invest in new technology, robotic automation technology, that reduces their cost of production and it increases output, improves also the quality of their uh, output. So we see that the supply curve shifts outward from S1 to S2. Um, S2 is equal to our marginal cost 2. And we're going to hold price constant in the short run at P1. So at P1, the quantity supplied at point B at quantity Q2. And the quantity demanded at P1 is at point A, Q1 at Q, uh, Q1. So we notice that at a price of P1, that the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. So we have excess supply. All right? We are over allocating resources to the production of cars. And we also notice this, that at Q2, the marginal cost of production is greater than the marginal benefit of production. So that is an over allocation. The excess supply thus puts downward pressure on price. Price begins to fall from P1 to P2. And as price falls, the quantity demanded increases along the demand curve from Q1 to Q3. And the quantity supplied um, by car manufacturers decreases from Q2 to Q3 until we reach point C, where S2 equals D1. That provides a new equilibrium price at P2 with a new equilibrium, equilibrium quantity at Q3, where QS, quantity supplied, equals quantity demanded. And also at point C, we notice that the marginal cost, MC2, is equal to the marginal benefit, MB1. So this is an allocatively efficient um, outcome. Thus, price falling from P1 to P2 has reallocated resources to reach an allocatively efficient level of output. All right, so that is our first scenario. And in our next video, we'll look at a second scenario with supply actually decreasing. Thank you so much.